Good morning, everybody. It is Mike Cavanaugh here from Regiment with our next installation of Clever Conversations. Uh, today's guest is Phil Leslie from Workbox Ventures. Good morning, Phil. Mike, so great to be with you this morning. It's great to see you. Usually I see you because our offices are, are fairly close to one another, but um, I'm up in Evanston today and you're in the uh, the West Jackson location of Workbox. Uh, That's right. But always great to see you. Phil, um, maybe you can give us just a little bit about your background, who you are, what you're doing, um, and then we'll kick off the conversation. Yeah, glad to. Uh, so currently managing partner of Workbox Ventures, an emerging venture fund focused on the future of work. But kind of my backstory leading up to that relates to how I ended up in this particular role with this focus. Um, a few prior chapters of my career, I started out in the corporate world at, uh, at Microsoft, uh, working on products where success was measured in how many hundreds of millions of units you sold. Took that experience and then hopped into very early stage startups, tried to apply some of the lessons that I learned early in my career, um, ended up launching a mobile app that was right as the app stores were coming online that was the first way to turn pictures of receipts into expense reports, disrupting a legacy business workflow, just looking at things through a new lens um, relative to just doing things the, the way we always did. Then grew and sold a company in the remote job interviewing space long before video interviews were kind of the normal standard, just typical. Of course, we'll have that as, as an option. After growing and selling both of those early stage companies, really got intrigued about being on the investment side where I could help uh, a larger cohort of founders work through some of the same challenges that I lived in the companies that I grew and sold. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and all that experience, you know, from Microsoft to the two startups, um, it was kind of pre, well, it wasn't kind of, it was pre COVID. Um, Mike, it was way pre COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it was way pre COVID, but um, you know, it's kind of a good lesson or, you know, experience um, to, to, to get real hands on of what is now called the future of work. Um, what, from those past experiences and how it applies to future of work, would you say was the most important um, that you learned? The way that I look at the world is anytime that there's some business process that the reason we're doing it is that someone says, hey, that's the way we've always done it. And that you kind of ask around and it's, well, geez, we've been doing this for this way for a decade or two decades or three decades. You just know when you run into a business workflow like that, that somewhere along the way, we've missed the opportunity to transform it in a way that's more efficient, that's easier for all of us, that doesn't create as much overhead and gets us on to, to more valuable tasks, valuable ways to spend our time. So that's what I did in that um, receipt scanning venture. I just thought, this is absurd that we're, that we're carrying around receipts and putting them into a next a printout and sending them in somewhere th th that's ridiculous we're not taking advantage of new technology and in the remote job interviewing venture when i when i just kind of thought about the opportunity that people were missing by telling job candidates that hey unless you can come to the office sometime next week to meet with the team we won't be able to consider you for this position um it just seemed like what's the real reason for that? The reason was, hey, that's just the way we've always done it. So I'm, I'm always looking for things where the storyline is, that's how we've always done it. And I know if I keep sniffing, I'm going to find something about the way we've always done it that is not taking advantage of the opportunities we have. Yeah, that was uh, Henry Ford, you know, said when people were trying to make horses go faster, he, he built the car. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, that's really interesting insight. Um, maybe you could speak a little bit to like the ability for you to see companies. Um, and well, maybe before we jump into that, we'll talk about um, the, the future of future of work. So you've got all the past experience and what is the future of the future of work? 
Yeah, so I mean, if, if you look in the context of some of the some of the big disruptions that have happened that have changed the way we work over the course of history, things like, I mean, just taking us way back, when the personal computer was first introduced, Mike, you and I might be two of the only people that see this, they're old enough to remember what it was like to type something up out of a typewriter, use some whiteout and backspace and get back to the right place to fix a mistake. Think about the before and after of that disruption and how much more efficient and enjoyable that made it to collaborate with people when you're working together on a document. Fast forward to the disruption that happened when cloud computing was introduced. The before on that were that there were a ton of would-be entrepreneurs that had ideas they wished to bring to market, but in order to do so, it would have required them to buy a rack mount system of servers program those and host their own website in just this barrier to entry that made it impossible to make forward progress on what they wanted to bring to market. If you kind of look at these types of disruptions and same thing with smartphones, and we talked about an example on that, the disruption we're facing today is that teams are learning how to reach high performance in a hybrid and distributed mode. They're looking at the ways that we used to work pre-COVID when in many companies, the assumption was, look, if there's something we need to work on together, I'll just walk down the hall, kind of gather up the team and we'll head to the conference room and talk it over. Now that companies are much more hybrid, distributed and flexible, that disruption also creates an amazing opportunity for before versus after contrast. And when you look forward 10 years, we'll be in a spot where you, where you think back and you say, gosh, I can, I can barely remember what life was like before this, it, 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 so much will have changed. That's really interesting. Um, I think about just my experiences that I've had, you know, prior to COVID. And I remember the first time I got on a Zoom call, I'm like, this is crazy. You know, I'll just hop on the phone. But, you know, now it's so like, we're so accustomed to it. I, I really like what, how you said that, you know, 10 years from now, we're going to forget that we even, you know, went to the office or, you know, how, how we used to, you know, the phones used to be on the wall in the kitchen kind of a thing. Um, yeah, pretty interesting insight. And, you know, like for our listeners, what I think is really amazing is you've taken your experiences in your own companies that you've, you know, started your experience at Microsoft, um, and now at Workbox, you're the, you know, the main guy, the managing director running Workbox Ventures. Um, maybe you could just, uh, you know, we can come full circle on the future of work, you know, all your past experiences where, you know, where you said it was just going and how does that come first full circle with your role at Workbox Ventures? Sure, glad to talk about that. And Mike, we've got such a great team at Workbox, you know, I, I'm, I'm pleased to be part of a team. We're making a big impact together. Um, and as I think about the 550 Workbox members that are across six current locations that we have, people that are in our spaces, building vibrant businesses, collaborating, but a lot of them are kind of hybrid and distributed. They might be in our West Loop location one day in Chicago. They might be on a business trip to Salt Lake City the next week and pop into that location. It's a, it's a new world, and we have the joy of learning from those members about what the challenges and opportunities are as they find the new best way to do business for them. So with Workbox Ventures, we want to take all of that energy that we get from our members and help them advance their journey as fast and as best as they can. So when we hear things about, hey, gee, it's kind of challenging to do learning and development now. That, um, that we've got team members in seven different locations and we've got um, someone that works remotely and then we've got a handful of people that are all in this one particular spot. Things like going from that sort of problem statement to drawing a dotted line to um, a company like Learny that's one of our accelerator companies, um, a company that helps uh, leaders capture learning moments right in the moment that it happens. If they just get off a customer call in a challenging conversation, and there's a situation they were in, an action they took, and an outcome that they got to, being able to pop open the Learny app, uh, record a 30 to 60 second 
explanation of what happened, what the outcome was, and then push that out to the team to just watch a quick TikTok style video about um, that learning moment. That's an example of where the feedback from our membership base comes full circle to a solution that we can help um, that we can help bring to life through partnership um, in our accelerator and uh, the things that we'll be doing with our venture fund. So I know it's just one example, but the inspiration comes from our members. Yeah, no, and you know that's a great example. You know, I don't know how many times I've told my team in the last two years that I'm very like open door. Um, and if everybody's in the office, they can hear me talking. And if, you know, I'm on the phone with an investor or a, an issuer of a, you know, of a, of a security, like, and we have some news, I don't have to repeat myself because the whole team was in there to hear it. Learning, I mean, that definitely, that's, I'm going to check it out because that's, I've been like complaining about, you know, I have to repeat myself. I have to call, you know, Joe over here and say, hey, this just happened. And I got to call Pat over here and say, hey, just, this just happened. And I found that I was spending a lot of time just updating everyone. And that sounds like an interesting tool. Also, the uniqueness of, you know, you mentioned Workbox has an accelerator. You've got six locations, 500 plus members. It just And with your experience, Phil, in the future of work, it just seems like an unfair advantage as, as a manager that you, you've got this purview into all these companies. Can you speak to that a little bit? I'm, I'm lucky to say that we do have a extraordinary advantage. The, the members that joined Workbox, they, they come to Workbox not just to find a desk and coffee and a place to take meetings. They come to Workbox because they're serious about growing their business. They're open to collaboration, open to sharing a bit about what their challenges and opportunities are, and open to having us kind of bring the community around them to help, it, to help them work through what's next. And that, that sort of openness and depth of relationship with our members creates this just exceptional insight into the very present day challenges that businesses are, are facing. And the fact that hybrid and distributed is becoming um, such a big trend means that we have very present feedback from the market about what the challenges are for that and the opportunity to access the types of ventures that are going to bat to solve those challenges. And it's just, we, we absolutely must help bring those two parties together. And the venture fund is one of the ways to do that. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, capital, you know, when you ask a founder, like what their most, you know, treasured, you know, challenge, what keeps them up at night, it, it always comes back to capital. Um, and I know Workbox, you've got Workbox Ventures, but along with that, you formed 40 plus relationships with other VC firms. Um, how has that been useful for, for Workbox Ventures and, you know, the companies that are not even in the accelerator, but just rent space at Workbox? Right. There, there's plenty of room for as many investors that want to get involved in this space, that want to help our accelerator companies, help our member companies. You know, we didn't form Workbox <laughs> Ventures with the intention of being the one and only. We formed it as being part of the broader story of how these how these ventures get capitalized and can unlock growth. So just as an example, uh, we've got an investor day for our accelerator company. We've got eight future of work companies that are doing amazing things, including Learny. And you know we've got a couple dozen investors that will attend that, that are looking forward to hearing what those ventures are doing. And we'd love nothing more than for that to create just dozens of follow-up conversations about ways that those ventures can access the capital that they need to, to unlock growth. It, 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 takes, it takes a village, Mike. It does. Um, and you guys are building a wonderful village. You know, Regiment is a member of the uh, North Shore or the River North um, Workbox location. And, you know, we've watched you guys grow, have been, you know, there since pretty close to the beginning. And, we really enjoy everybody that works at Workbox and all the other companies there. It's just been a it's been a terrific experience and have really been enjoying working with you, Phil. Um, you know, it's uh, it's been a pleasure so far and, you know, look forward to a long continued relationship. Um, Mike, always, always a pleasure to see the regiment team growing and doing great things and uh, zipping around our various Workbox locations, meeting with partners and clients and team members. Uh, it, it's such a pleasure to have you in the, in the community. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate that. You know, it, it's great. I mean, um, we've met so many great people, not just from Workbox, but the other companies. Um, and I encourage our teammates and, you know, we've been coming in more and more. Um, I think we've got 10 memberships now um, in an office space. And it's uh, it's been it's been great. I can't wait to check out all the other locations and um, Salt Lake City and Minneapolis. It's like it's really fun to watch grow. You know, it's uh, it's it's cool. Um, I'm going to give a couple seconds for people in the audience to type up some questions. Um, anything cool that you're looking at? Interesting that. I'm sure it's a lot. Anything you want to share about any companies or, you know, the process? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I can talk a little bit about the accelerator companies that are, that are presenting tomorrow. It's a, yeah. it's a big day for us as far as our uh, accelerator investor day. Um, so, so I mentioned, uh, I, I mentioned Learny. Um, there's a, a, a company called um, Viewpoint AI that merges the best of, of human intelligence and AI together in a way that propels decisions that can't be fully made by AI, but also shouldn't be fully powered just by human effort. Um, there's a company called Adelant that's doing amazing things with employee onboarding. If you, get on, if you get onboarding right, that's a fast path to long employee tenure and retention. If you do it wrong, that's a fast path to attrition. Um, Kite Edge, doing great things in helping enterprises gather all of the knowledge that exists in their organization, but to bring it to bear in a way that helps them make those key business decisions um, that, that they need to make, harnessing every bit of knowledge that they have in the organization. Those are a few. We've got some amazing companies in the accelerator. Uh, keep on keep on asking. We'll keep bringing forth interesting companies. Yeah. Um, and what should we, you know, we've got 30 plus registered reps at Regiment Securities, you know, one of our holdings at Regiment. Um, and we're always meeting new people, seeing deal flow. What should we be keeping our ears open for uh, as far as companies that we could, you know, put on your radar? For the accelerator, pre-seed companies that look at a current business workflow and say, we're only doing this because this is the workflow that we've always done for the past few decades, and that's unacceptable. Or turn that on, on its head and take advantage of all the new ways of doing business. So pre-seed companies, that that's kind of their mentality when they think about the future of work. For seed and A companies that we can look at for the fun, same focus. People that are, that are disrupting business workflows in a very positive way and um, challenging the status quo, getting to more efficiency, better outcomes, better teamwork by using modern tools. Awesome. Um, I don't see any questions typed into the box here. Um, it's been great, Phil. Thanks for coming on and, and sharing your thoughts. And uh, like I said, it's been a pleasure working with you and the Workbox team. And I'm really excited about the future. On July 20th, maybe we could just make an announcement about maybe there's a happy hour or something happening. <laughs> drop, 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 drop me your mic a line if, if you want to kind of get to know some of the key characters behind Workbox Ventures and the Workbox team. And we'll find a way for you to do that. There you go. July. Perfect. Thanks, Phil. Thank you, Mike. Yep.